All right, I'm going to show you a very brief introduction to the Shapoko CNC here at Maycaven. Just to get you started, let's take a look at the machine. So it's a three-axis uh, wood milling machine. Once you are, uh, when the power is off, you can actually see how it will move on the various axes, and then this changes it with the Z. Uh, we are going to be installing limit switches, which will stop it, but for the time being, it does not have a limit switch, so you have to be particularly careful. Uh, you can see that the board itself has a, an approach for work holding, where you take these various, uh, you screw into one of these holes, and this bolt stops one end from coming down, so you can get a nice grip on your workpiece. Uh, this is waste board that can be cut into, but if at all possible, if you're going to be cutting through, try and avoid cutting it so we, it has a longer lifespan before we have to replace it. This whole system runs off of a Arduino. So the Arduino is uh, back here, and it will interpret something called G-code. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the software. For this example, what I did is I pulled up a silhouette of a dog. It's important that you use an SVG as a shape, something that is a vector, rather than just a plain old bitmap. I use this program called Inkscape to convert the bitmap to a vector. And I can confirm that it's a vector by seeing that it has lots of these little nodes inside the image. It's a set of lines. I save that image, and then I went over into another piece of software called Easel. And Easel is an online web application by the people at Inventables, uh, the people who actually made the Shapoko, and it allows you a very easy way to produce 2.5D designs. Now, a 3D design is one that you can actually have a curved surface on the Z, so picture a dome. With 2.5D, you're defining various flat images, and you can have multiple of them stacked on top of each other, but ultimately it's sort of in a step function that your, uh, your image is. It just makes it a little easier to work with because you can import SVGs rather than starting with a three-dimensional shape. I have uh, used the file menu to just import my little dog picture here. And from there, I get a preview of what my dog cutout will look like. What I've done is I've taken the time to measure my workpiece. And I've put that it's 16 by 8.5 by a half inch so that my preview shows me what my workpiece is going to look like when completed. I've also set the material. So there's various materials that are inside of the system, and these have defaults for how fast it cuts and other important factors so that the machine can keep up with the needs of the material. You can also set your uh, bit size. So in this case, I'm using a 1 8 bit. Uh, so it's important to know what you're cutting because that will affect the paths that are generated. And you can always override your settings, so it will give you the defaults. But you can see here there's the feed rate and the depth per pass. Feed rate basically being the speed at which it cuts. And the depth per pass is how far down it cuts each time it does a, uh, does a pass. So you can set those, but the defaults come from the material. Once you've done all that, you can click the Simulate button. and it will render your pass. This preview gives you a pretty good idea of what is going to happen. You can see here that it's, the red lines are the travel, so not cutting, and it's going to come down and lower until it's cutting the wood on the blue lines. Now we have some options. We chose to fill it, and we chose to fill it to the depth of 1 8. I could have made that deeper or more shallow, or I could have chosen to make it an outline rather than a fill. So within the outline, there's also options. There's on the path, which is maybe the easiest default to start with. And then there are doing it of outside the line and inside the line. The reason that's important is because when you're cutting away material, you have something called a kerf. It's the amount of material that's removed by the thickness of the bit. And if you were to just go down the middle all the time, you might lose details either on the inside or the outside of that cut. If you want to do something like an inlay, you'd want to think that you use the bit for one, the, the female shape, the shape you're going to put it into, as on the outside, 
and then you would cut the, or the inside, the bit would be going on the inside, so you get the exact line around the outside, and then you do the opposite for the part that you inlay. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how you might approach an inlay and what these various options are. If I'm happy with my design and my dog, what I would then do is make sure that my machine settings are right. So this is a Shapoko, Shapoko 2. So from this drop down, I've selected that. There's only a few options on this machine. I've selected the bed size here of 31 inches, and I've said that the spindle control is manual. There's a little setup instruction that you can walk through for the machine. Um, once my machine is set, I'll need to make sure that it actually is connected. So in order for the Arduino to talk to this software, you have to install a little browser plugin, which it will ask you for, plus you have to have the Arduino software running on your computer so that you, it can communicate. When you click the Carve button up here, it will ask you for what COM port it is on. On a PC, it's sometimes necessary to go into your devices and then look under ports, and I can see here that my COM port is 3 for the Arduino. By default, it hadn't figured that out, so the first time you carve, you might have a little work to set up the communication. Since I've done that, it already shows up as a green carve button. I'm going to turn on the machine, and the button for turning it on is, put it close, is right here. So now it's on. Once the machine is on, it no longer easily moves because all the stepper motors have been activated. You'll also see some lights and the fan running on the Arduino. Let's uh, start the carving process since our material is secured. This will walk you through the various stages and remind you of the important steps that you need to have made sure have happened. So have we measured our material? It's a half inch. I can confirm that we've done this. Have we secured it? I just showed you that we have secured it and we've done as instructed. Are we using a 1 8 bit? We are in fact. And will we zero the machine? This part is what you do. You put the bit to a starting point that the machine will then use as a reference from which it moves. And you want to put it into the lower, and that would be left hand, side of the board. These little controls here allow you to move it. So if I were to click X, it's moving to the side. Maybe you can grab it on film there. And I'm going to be jogging it back and forth, then maybe some down on the Y. I want to get as close to that corner as I can, and then I'm going to use the Z down, so it's just, it's a little too low, so it's just kissing the top of that board. Once I have done that, I can click the confirm home position. If I need to fine tune it, I can actually change the step interval up or down, and that helps me to get more precision with where I'm going on the machine. At this point, we're on the last step, which is start to carve. So I can click raise the bit. This is going to raise it to its safety height or the travel that it's going to go above your material. And it asks me to turn the spindle on. So I would now turn the spindle on. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to air cut for you guys. So at this point, you would follow the instructions. But I'm actually going to return one step. and I'm going to tell it to zero a little higher so we can watch it cut without all the noise of the spindle going. If I wanted to turn on the spindle, I would plug it in and the switch is right here. So I'm going to confirm home. It's going to raise the bit. I'm going to lie and say the spindle is on. And now it's going to cut in the air as if it's cutting into the board. And I'll say carve. It's lowering as if it cut into the wood. And if the spindle is on, it would be now following the path that you see below it, because I've done this project earlier. Now it's important that you don't leave this machine alone, that you monitor it, and that you have the appropriate feed rate and other settings so that you're not stressing the bit or the material. The other thing is because it doesn't have limit switches yet on it, to be very aware of where it's moving and where the limits are within the work area. Uh, you do not want it ramming against itself on the edges. 
that is the overview of the uh, Shapoko CNC. Be sure to read any of the additional materials that we have posted on the website. Thank you.